Thank you so much to Likewise for sponsoring today's video. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is going to be my August wrap up, which I'm really excited about because I mentioned this in my July wrap up, but it felt like April was a great reading month. May was just so-so. Then June was spectacular and July was just so-so. And I was like, maybe August will be great. And it was, it was so good. I read so many good books this month. I reread two books that I really love and it was just a great time. So I think I read 11 books and I'm gonna save the five romances for the end of this video. <laughs> I read five romances and it was so fun. Um, so if you'd like to hear about those romances, you'll have to wait until the end, my friends. Anyway, before we get into this wrap up, I do wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is Likewise. I'm so glad to be working with Likewise again. If you don't know what Likewise is, it is an app that helps you find the next thing you might like based off of things you've already liked, right? So that's within the podcast book, movie and TV categories. When you're setting up your profile, you say, hey, I like this book, this book, this book. And likewise says, based on that feedback, you might like these books. And it's really great. There's also a community tab where you can ask the community for a romance recommendation or a thriller recommendation. And I, myself, have just set up my second list on likewise to commemorate the start of another semester. So I've put up a little list on Likewise that uh, lists out a couple of my favorite classics that I've had to read for school or just classics I've read that I really enjoyed. And I thought that would be a great way to motivate before the start of another semester, which has started now. So if Likewise sounds like something you'd like, it would be wise of you. <laughs> to click the link in my description to download Likewise for free. So yeah, thanks again Likewise for sponsoring. And now let's get into the books. All right, so the first two books I'm gonna talk about in this wrap up are two Greek retellings. We have The Silence of the Girls and we have A Thousand Chips. Both are about the Trojan War, but both explore very different subjects. The Silence of the Girls is mainly from Briseis's point of view. We get a little bit of Achilles' point of view, but it's mainly from Briseis, and it's just talking about her experience in the Trojan War as a Greek prisoner. And so if you've read the Song of Achilles and you've been like, wow, Briseis seems really interesting, she is, and this book is a great way to explore Briseis. However, it's not the kind of sweet existence that is portrayed in the Song of Achilles. We know that Briseis isn't there very happily, but at least in the Song of Achilles, she seems to find, you know, optimism in her life with Patroclus and somewhat Achilles. In this book, that's not the way. In this book, she is very resentful. She is very angry. There is a lot of violence that's discussed. Um, and so definitely think about that if you think that you're gonna be particularly upset by certain sexual violence or physical violence, because that is discussed in this book. But overall, I thought this was a great counter perspective to the Briseis we get in the Song of Achilles. So really, really liked it. And this author just came out with another book that explores the Trojan women's perspective, which speaking of, we have A Thousand Ships, which is about, I think it's like 15 or 20 different women in the Trojan Wars um, or who aren't even at the Trojan Wars but are affected by the Trojan Wars and their perspectives on the war itself. So for example, we get chapters from uh, Thetis, who is Achilles' mother. We've got a couple chapters with Aphrodite. We've got Penelope, who's Odysseus's wife, who's not at the Trojan War, but is reflecting on her, on her husband's time away. So when I started reading this, I was afraid that it was gonna be a little too, too many perspectives and it was gonna be hard to track. Not the case, my friends. In fact, it was really easy to follow along. I thought the author did an excellent job at helping the reader understand what was going on. And I didn't feel lost at all in this novel. And I thought the writing was really stunning. So if you were interested in Trojan War retellings, both are spectacular but in different ways. Both explore violence and abuse, so keep that in mind. This one's just about Briseis, and then this has multiple women. But Briseis is also in this one. 
All right, next up, we have a book that I talked about in my recent book haul that I just posted like a week or so ago. And I was able to sneak in this book at the end of the month because of how many wonderful reviews it got in my comment section on that video. And that is Open Water. If you've heard about this book or if you've seen this book on the internet, that's because it deserves to be there. This book was excellently done. The writing is spectacular. The discussion around love, falling in love, heartbreak, race, fear, and how it kind of is grounded in water metaphors was simply stunning. It's so incredible how the author was able to reflect all of these emotions and all of these experiences through water imagery. So the book is basically about two young people that meet at a party and it feels like love at first sight and yet they're just friends for a really long time. And there's this kind of torturous flirting and blooming affection and feelings, but they're not allowing themselves to really dive into it dive into it. Um, and then eventually things progress. Um, as, as the romance is progressing, conversations around race and their own identities within their world and their sphere in Britain are at the forefront and watching how they fall in love and then they're hesitant about love and how they pull away from love. It just, I thought it was fantastically done. Something I'll also say is that for how short this book is, I didn't expect the romance to impact me the way it did. And yet I feel like the author just did an exceptional job of explaining those like first feelings of infatuation, love at first sight, especially within the context of like summer flings and romances. I just thought it was so well done. I've already marked a few pa passages, but I know that the next time I read this book, it's just gonna be like every page is gonna have a quote or multiple quotes highlighted because of how stunning this book was. So highly recommend it. Definitely recommend picking this up and giving it a read. And I just thought it was excellent. All right, another book that I read this month was a book that I read for my book club with Joel and Elias, which is the late night book club. And that was The Chosen and the Beautiful. This is a retelling of The Great Gatsby. And I know for some people who love The Great Gatsby, they feel like this book just wasn't what they wanted it to be. It was too close to the original story or it didn't go far enough into a retelling. However, for me, because I don't really know the original Great Gatsby very well, I read it once like a year and a half ago and it was just a quick read. I think I read it in a day and I was like, all right, I read it finally. Uh, because I don't have a huge connection to the original Great Gatsby, this book was excellent. <laughs> I thought it was so good. There's so much like, jewel imagery and rubies and sapphires and sparkles and glitter. And I mean, it really feels like you are in a Great Gatsby party. Like you just feel like, just like this novel seems to shimmer in front of you. And I thought it was so well written. The only thing I wish would have been explained more were the magical elements. Um, the magic comes up and there's really cool aspects of magic that pop up in this book, specifically around our main character, Jordan. She's able to wield this sort of paper magic where she can cut up pages of a book or just pieces of paper that she finds. And she can create beautiful, spectacular, living, breathing paper magic, basically. And I love when paper and ink is discussed in novels because you're reading a book that's made of pages. So the fact that there was paper magic in this book was so fascinating to me. And yet I feel like there wasn't enough of it. I would have loved to know more about Jordan exploring these powers of paper magic and what she could do with the magic. I would have loved to see more of it, but overall I thought the writing was spectacular and I just really, really enjoyed it. It really felt like a storybook that I completely got lost in. So. If you're a huge fan of, fan of The Great Gatsby, then I hear that this book isn't for everyone. But if you don't really know The Great Gatsby, like me, it was really fun. So yeah. All right, another book that I read for a book club. This is Chanel's book club called The Krusty Book Club. Let me just say also that Chanel is one of the sweetest people I've ever met on the internet. She is amazing. And I can't wait for her to visit the Bay Area someday soon so that I can just meet her and hug her and just tell her, how amazing she is. Um, anyway, so she invited me to be a part of her book club live stream for the book, The Echo Wife. And this is a kind of sci-fi thriller that surrounds cloning and a um, 
what is that? What would you call that? A, a marriage with, there's some adultery in this marriage. Basically the main woman in this book is a super successful scientist that figures out how to clone people perfectly. And her and her husband start having problems. And then she finds out one day that her husband has been cheating on her with her own clone. So he cloned her and is now cheating on her with a clone of herself. Um, and so from there you watch as this thrilling story starts to unravel and the clone ends up doing something really bad. It needs help from the original woman, like our main character. And, um, there's just a lot of twists and turns. For me, I, I'm always intimidated by science fiction because I feel like the science is gonna be too prevalent, but I felt like I was able to follow along with the cloning process perfectly. I felt like the author did a great job at like not overwhelming you with science, but still giving you enough context where you believed them. So I thought this book was super good. I know there's a lot of mixed feelings on this book. Some people think, you know, it was just too much. It was like too over the top, like things didn't line up perfectly. I was just in it for a fun ride and that it was. So I really liked it. I don't know, I thought it was great. And it makes me wanna read more science fiction. So yeah, I don't know what this was. I don't know what that was, okay, yeah. All right, and then the last fiction I read before we get into the romances, which I'm excited for, um, was Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. I was really shocked by how much I liked this book because I've mentioned this, I really liked Normal People, the show, but I didn't love the book. I do wanna reread it, but I just didn't love the book. And I also didn't love Conversations with Friends. So I was like, maybe her writing just isn't for me. And then I read this book and I really enjoyed it, specifically the conversations around mental health. One of the main characters, Alice, has quite the battle with mental health. And I was able to really see myself in her character in a way that I haven't really, I haven't read enough fiction about mental health to feel like my own experience has been represented. And so for that reason, I felt like reading Alice's perspective was really just like a breath of fresh air. I was like, oh, okay. So, okay, my mental health, I'm not alone. <laughs> so I felt like that was great. I also really liked how the story was kind of unfolding between the two main characters. There's like two women who are really good friends and you would see them living their lives. And then because they don't live near each other, they would then go and catalog it in emails to each other. So you would go see them live an experience and then they'd write out their feelings about it in an email to each other. And I just really liked that. I think maybe because me and my best friend have to rely so heavily on phone calls that, you know, if, if there was a book about me and my best friend, you'd see a lot of us living other lives and then coming back together to call and catch up. So I really enjoyed that. So yeah, I mean, the characters aren't perfect. They definitely make mistakes, especially one of the guys. He makes a lot of mistakes and he can be really shitty at times. But overall, I think that I resonated the best with this Rooney because of the discussions around mental health. So yeah, that is the final fiction. And now we're gonna get into the five romances I read this month, which were excellent. Oh my God. Each of these romances did something spectacular in their own way. Um, I feel like it was exactly what I needed. I was really romance heavy at the end of the month because it was right before my semester started or right when my semester started. And I just wanted to feel warm. You know, I just wanted my heart to feel a flutter and to blush, I guess. I just really wanted to read romance. So first I reread two romances. The first one was Beach Read by Emily Henry. I have read Beach Read once before and I really liked it, but I liked it even more the second time around because I was picking up on things I didn't notice the first time around. There's hints at like, you know, the romance before things take off that you don't really notice on the first time around. And I thought it was really special. And I, I really like Beach Read because it's not just, it's not just a romance. Like there's a discussion around writer's block and writing novels and different genres and cults. And, and then both of the main characters are dealing with some family trauma and some family sadness and baggage that they're working through. So, I mean, I really like Beach Read. So it was a great, reread, right? It was literally right before the semester started and it was like exactly what I needed. And then the second 
romance reread of the month was, do I have to say it? I don't think so. The Hating Game. I don't need to say a lot about this. Um, it's just a romance that I like to return to when I'm feeling particularly anxious or stressed out. It was a great way to kind of break it up and just kind of lose myself in a story, but already knowing the ending. So it felt good. And there you go. <laughs> Now let's get into the three new romances I found this month. The first one is The Dating Dare, which was really fun. I really liked the storyline in this one because it does engage with some cliches of romances that I love, like the two main characters meet at a wedding, which is a huge cliche, but I love that cliche because I love the idea of like someone meeting the love of their life at a wedding that's all about love and you're feeling all the things. And so I loved that aspect of it. I also really love that the main woman in this book is a master sommelier. So she crafts beers and she works at a bar with her brothers and she's really close to her brothers. Um, and there's just a really strong emphasis of family in this romance. So they basically meet at a wedding and uh, I think he's the best man and she's the maid of honor. And so, I mean, even that's kind of a cliche, right? Like the best, the best friends of the bride and groom are kind of eyeing each other and they meet and I think they go out for drinks that night of the wedding. And he says something, they might be playing truth or dare. And then he says, I dare you to go on four dates with me. And she's like, I mean, fine, whatever. Cause he's actually gonna move to Paris in like six weeks. So he's, she's like, cool, I get to have like six weeks of fun. And he's like, cool, I get to have six weeks of fun. Um, and then, uh, you know, after a couple dates, they realize that maybe four dates isn't enough. Okay, that's what I'll say. So if you're in the mood for a super sweet romance, I think this is a really great book. And um, I think that the characters, they just, they have really great chemistry. They're really sweet to each other and they're really silly and um, there is some steaminess in it. So yeah, that was the first new romance of the month. The second new romance of the month was You Had Me at Ola. Listen up, my friends. This book has been on my radar for so long, but I put it on my bookshelf and there are multiple, I have a few romances that are like this maroon color. So it melted into my bookshelf and I forgot I had it. And I just was snooping around my own, my own shelves and I found this and I'm so glad I did because it was so good. It was so good, my friends. It was steamy, there was drama, there was, oh, I just thought it was great. Sorry, let me explain. So our main characters are Ashton, who is a Telenova star. And then we have Jasmine, who is a soap star. They both star in different versions of television. And the two of them are hired to be the stars of a new streaming service show. So basically like a new Netflix show. And there's a potential for both of their careers to explode after this show starts. And so they both sign up and there's an immediate connection, but they both have reasons for not wanting to pursue a relationship. He is kind of hiding huge aspects of his life and she has seemed to be like a paparazzi magnet. And since he's so private, it's hard for him to envision being with a woman who gets so much attention from the paparazzi. So the two of them are clearly attracted to one, other, one another, but they have reasons for not wanting to pursue. <laughs> and I'll let you guess if they start to pursue the relationship or not, right? I mean, just look at the cover and take a guess on if anything happens between the two of them. One of my favorite movies is La La Land. And something I love about that is that you have a main character who's like an actress, but you see her like in her real life when she's just talking about being an actress and then you see her actually acting, right? Like in the movie, she's like auditioning or she's like, acting in a play or whatever it is. And in this book, that definitely happens because both main characters are actors and you're seeing them talk about their scenes and rehearsing lines together. And then you see them actually in the scenes when they're playing their characters. And I thought it was super good and just like a really creative way to tell a romance. And their acting characters, like the characters they were playing and their relationship in the show were paralleling some things that were happening in their real romance. And it was just spectacular. So I thought it was super good and the steamy parts are great. So there you have it. All right, and then the last 
new romance I found this month was It Happened One Summer. I picked this up in June, I believe, because I was really into reading books that had to do with the ocean or boats or vacations or something like that. And this, I mean, obviously, like, look at the cover. <laughs> it is clearly taking place near a body of water, which is exactly what I wanted. Basically, we have a main character named Piper, who's like a Hollywood socialite. She is an Instagram model. And one night she throws a party that gets out of hand and she is sent to jail for a night. And then when she gets out, her movie producer stepdad is like, hey, I'm not paying for this life anymore. You can't just keep doing stuff like this. You actually have to figure your life out. So I'm sending you to a fishing town that your dad's from. Her dad had passed away when she was little. Um, but I'm sending you to this fishing town and you can figure life out for a couple months. And so when she's at this fishing town, she meets the captain of a crabbing boat or a fishing boat. But they do catch crabs. <laughs> um, and uh, the two of them should not be attracted to each other for various reasons. They're just like completely different people. Um, and he still wears the wedding ring of his deceased deceased wife and so there's plenty of reasons why they shouldn't be together and again i'll let you guess if anything happens between the two of them <laughs> so overall i think that the romance was sweet like there was definitely moments where i was like are they gonna end up together i guess we'll see um and you know just like you know, butterflies and everything. There were there were moments where I was genuinely excited to see if they were gonna end up together. Um, the steaminess was also great. However, the main girl, Piper, is really unlikable for at least the first like third of the book, especially the first few chapters. I almost couldn't get past the first few chapters because I was like, I don't want to read about this character. And definitely by the end, you feel things for her and you're excited for her and you hope for the best. But I just feel like that's like the one thing I didn't like about this book was kind of like the buildup of her character. And I think that was the point, like the author didn't want you to like her so that you could see her character arc. But I don't know, I guess just keep that in mind. I hope that makes sense. Romance was good, steaminess was good, but the main character was kind of annoying for a while and um, yeah, there we have it, my friends. Those are the books that I read in August. Let me know what you read in August. What was the best book you read in August? Was it a good reading month? Was it a bad reading month? Let me know. And thank you again to Likewise for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to download the app for free, again, you can use the link in my description. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.